Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Opinion: Obama waging a coup right now. Here's what we found. The very president who once stated he wanted a citizen militia controlled by the president and not the governor of each state is today waging a coup against the United States and her duly elected president. All of the anti-Americanism and civil unrest that has been happening since back in 2015 in the U.S. is being fanned by Obama's organizing for action corporations many splinter groups like Black Lives Matter, Antifa, Democratic Socialists of America, and MoveOn.org to name a few. The street violence we have been seeing since Ferguson, the harassment of Trump employees and supporters, the savage push for open borders, the David Hogg GN confiscation movement after the Parkland SG which was was easily avoidable and against all things pretty much all thing American in general is a massive movement to destroy the United States of America as a sovereign constitutional nation from within. Here is more on this via Eagle Rising. Barack Obama is waging a coup against the USA via his loyal political activist groups. All of the anti-Americanism taking place in the U.S. today is by Obama's organizing for action corporations many splinter groups like Black Lives Matter, Antifa, Democratic Socialists of America, Move on Dot etc. The street violence, harassment of Trump employees and supporters, the push for open borders, the David Hogg GN confiscation movement, and against all things American in general is a massive movement to destroy the United States of America as a sovereign constitutional nation from within. Their new world order vision of a borderless U.S., void of any form of national identity, governed by the United Nations via a dictatorship, is their main goal. We see the anti-Americanism on a daily basis today, not only in demonstrations, but in the burning of the American flag at virtually every protest. Interestingly, these same anti-American factions destroying the flag, are the same Obama cabal that has been actively pushing for the removal of all things Confederate such as statues, names of schools and names of some city streets, etc. Their excuse for pushing this is said to be out of disdain for the Confederates' prejudice idealism of black slavery and white supremacy which should have no place in U.S. society today, since the Union won the Civil War. However, since Donald Trump began his presidential campaign in 2016, they began to use the very same narrative against Trump and his supporters as they used in their efforts to abolish the Confederacy from the history of the U.S. Now they are saying socialism is the only solution to ending the prejudice against blacks, Hispanics, gays, and Muslims that is prevalent in the mindset of those who believe in nationalism, sovereignty, and are patriotic to the U.S. as an individual country. Thus, the cat's out of the bag of the true nature of their intentions. It never was out of concern for any individual rights of any group of people from blacks to gays or out of concern for keeping illegal alien families together. It was always out of the desire to destroy the country, as we know it. It should have been clear to anyone that Obama wanted to transform the U.S. into a neo-Nazi dictatorship with such actions as considering U.S. combat veterans and all conservative patriots domestic terrorists more so than radical Islamists. This, as well as his declaration that the war on terror was over. Even with Obama's rejection of the idea that international terrorism was a major threat to the U.S., he still signed one of the most Nazi-like bills ever, aside from the Patriot Act, INDA, which gave the government the right to arrest detain, and even shoot those who resisted arrest that were even suspected of being involved in terrorism, domestic or international. By signing DA, Obama either believed terrorism was a major threat, or he was using DA for use in future U.S. civil unrest he expected to arise when American patriots finally realized he was destroying the very fabric of their country and would begin a revolution against it. Which would have been the case, had the dictatorship's chosen successor Hillary Clinton won the election. What his signing to did do was to legalize propaganda via the main media, which we witness as rampant today. With 4th of July Independence Day celebrations fresh on the minds of patriotic Americans, it is essential that everyone who has served in the military, has family members who have served, some dying in combat defending the freedom of the USA, and those who believe in America as a free constitutional nation as it was founded on, be aware of the threat from within. We must recognize this threat by identifying those who perpetrate the destruction of our country. This being Barack Obama's army of Nazis rioting in our streets, their erasure of U.S. history, intimidation and harassment of conservative patriots who support President Trump, and those in office in Washington who also support this anti-American movement. All involved are guilty of sedition and treason. But what's perhaps even more dangerous in all this is the fact that the same anti-American factions which are actively trying to destroy America are the same Obama-supported groups that have been successfully pushing for the removal of anything Confederate from our nation. 
they explain the removal of Confederate statues because anything Confederate promotes prejudice idealism of black slavery and white supremacy. They promote this as not having a place in U.S. society today because the Union won the Civil War. But they never mention the fact that it's a part of our history and should never be erased. This is what happens when a nation elects someone who had a questionable record, or no record at all. No one knew who Barack Hussein Obama was, but the media told you to vote for him because he is African American and he knows how to read a good speech. Even though five years from the 2008 election he told all of us we're five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America the weak-minded in our society fell for it and elected what can be considered the first anti-American president we have ever had. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.